Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on showing you how to replace the driver side front seat belt buckle assembly on a 7th generation Honda Civic or 2nd generation Acura 1.7 EL. Um, the years being covered here are 2001 through 2005, which on these vehicles uh, were notoriously bad for uh, driver side front seat belt buckle assemblies where the internal switch would fail and causing the SRS indicator here to not go out upon starting the vehicle. So here I'll start the car and uh, as, as all the indicator lights go out you can tell that the SRS indicator is still lit in the bottom right corner and so my friend took their vehicle into the dealership to have it diagnosed and they said that the buckle was faulty and I'm going to show you guys how I confirm uh, that that is true and ultimately how to fix it okay guys so what I have here um, to confirm the failure of the driver's seat uh, buckle assembly is that I have basically plugged in through the OBD2 connector in the bottom uh, right footwell here of the driver's side and in my scan tool I can basically go ahead and look at enhanced DTCs uh, specific to um, the SRS system here so here I don't know how well you can actually see the menu but it basically says view uh, enhanced DCT uh, DTC's uh, diagnostic trouble codes ABS or SRS and I know that it's SRS so I'm gonna go into this menu and look up permanent DTC's and right away the system tells my tool here that it's a faulty driver seatbelt buckle switch um, so my tests here confirm what the dealership has told my buddy, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to fix that. So one of the first things that we need to do before we ever even remotely attempt to do any type of electrical work or SRS related work on the vehicle is to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery with our 10 millimeter wrench. The reason why is that the SRS system at any given time is actually energized and should you inadvertently trigger a switch or short the system out it can actually blow the airbag or the airbag modules which can be super dangerous if you're not sitting in the proper position for it to deploy. We have to wait about five to ten minutes for the SRS system to completely de-energize after disconnecting the battery but the next step we need to do uh, in the meantime is actually undo the bolts holding the seat to the floor which is located down here with the 14 millimeter bolt on the opposite end here, another 14 millimeter bolt, and conversely, two bolts on the rear of the seat. The rear bolts for the seat are actually concealed behind these covers here and here. So in order to take those off, we just simply have to pop these off um, like this to reveal the bolts. Now to spare us a little bit of heartache here so that we don't have to actually remove the seat from the car, we can actually just tip the car forward or the seat forward in the car by removing the driver's side headrest and then tipping the seat forward exposing the wiring underneath the seat. So this is what the car seat looks like tipped forward inside this Honda Civic. Now a piece of advice here is that if you want to be able to flip this forward easily inside the vehicle I strongly advise that you recline the seat back of the driver's seat as far back as you can so that it gives you room to clear the steering wheel and so underneath the seat here you can see that we have our connectors for a seat belt buckle right in here and basically this yellow cable here is the sensing cable for the airbag system hence why it's yellow and then this gray connector here is actually for the dashboard idiot light to tell you to put your seat belt on now it's worth mentioning here that most of the Honda connectors when you're disconnecting from the vehicle uses this little tab here where you press down and unplug but for the SRS connectors you actually have to slide this protection lock sleeve down like this before the harness can actually be disconnected like this so just sliding it out here and then unplugging it in this manner now if you can't move these connectors out properly you can actually just break these tabs off on the seatbelt buckle because this one's faulty anyways and the new one will come with new clips and everything you can see there's one broken here that I have to dig out now using your 14 millimeter ratchet go ahead and remove the buckle assembly as indicated by here at the base of the buckle if there are any clips holding the cabling assembly to the seat frame don't forget to undo, undo those as well Once the buckle assembly has been pulled out, just pay attention to the routing of your cabling. 
uh, before you yank everything apart. Okay guys, so this is what the replacement looks like from Honda. Now for those that are wondering, is it worth buying this part used? Um, I would say no. Uh, given the fact that this vehicle now is at the time of this video production, um, we're already looking at a car that's anywhere between 12 and 13 years old as of uh, 2014. So I mean, you gotta think, if a lot of these are failing even before that, then what makes you think that the used part is gonna last any better? So I decided to just buy a new one from Honda. They are insanely expensive. Um, they're like almost 300 bucks for this thing. So if you guys are wondering what the part number is for this car, it's a 2003 Honda Civic here, that's gray. It's 04816S5DA12ZA. But one thing to bear in mind is that the VIN number does matter when you're ordering this part, so make sure that you know the exact VIN number for your vehicle before placing your order. Um, and what's really neat with this is that the, for those that are really worried about how to do the installation, um, there's actually a pretty cool detailed instruction book that also teaches you how to do so um, from Honda because I mean these are seat, seat belts and as well as controls your airbag and sort of the tensioner uh, assembly so it's pretty important that you install this properly. Now I've just reinstalled this new buckle assembly loosely on the seat rails but I just wanted to make sure that you guys are fully aware of how the routing of this cable needs to go. Now on the cable assembly here you can see in the back here there's that black clip and then on the lower side of this cable there's another black clip and you need to make sure that that top clip pops into this hole here onto the frame behind the spring and then conversely this lower clip needs to be locked into this little hole here uh, where I've unplugged it if you can sort of see that it's super crucial that those are clipped in properly otherwise when you're moving the seat adjuster forward and backward you know some of these sharp metal pieces could potentially cut through this wire harness damaging the seat belt buckle assembly Using your ratchet, firmly tighten this bolt down, making sure that you pay attention to that this alignment tab fits in that hole properly. The lower cylinder portion here of the seat belt buckle also needs to fit into this bracket area, or at least in between the two tangs that hold it together. Next, reconnect the SRS connector assembly here, and the driver's seat belt warning light here. Now make sure that when you've connected this on, that this piece has slid from the unlocked position back to the lock position, which is which will look like that. This sleeve will be close to this white nub. And then we can carefully snap this back into the seat rail like this, sorry, like this, and like this. And then just double checking the routing of your wiring to make sure that all the clips that were here and then wraps around behind into the spring here and snapped into there. Once everything is complete, we can go ahead and place the seat back into position, align the holes of the rails, and then bolt the seat back to the floor. Once everything has been tightened down evenly and firmly, go ahead and replace the covers for the rear rail assemblies by snapping them back into place. Reinstall the rear headrest, reattach the negative terminal. So one thing we got to do here before we go ahead and start the car is to ensure that we go ahead and remove those diagnostic trouble codes from the SRS system. And so with my tool here, I'm very fortunate to have the ability to reset via this interface. If you don't, you can take it to your local shop or you can do the manual reset method, which I really don't recommend folks do if they are not comfortable um, poking around underneath their dash. and. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to reset the SRS system and then go ahead and start the car to see if the idiot light comes on again. So now I've reset the light, I'm going to go ahead and start the car and see if that SRS light stays lit. And it shouldn't because everything was cleared out. So there you go guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment and subscribe.